there's a new license that is coming to the store and there's a forum discussion here maybe i can go and uh, post a link into that it's in the comments and it's something that travis posted it is a new editorial license that we're getting uh, on the DAS store. And there's a lot of confusion around this. Why, why is that happening? Why, why is this good? And the DAS are scamming us. And it's, that's not why this is happening. It's an editorial license that allows PAs to sell items that we cannot use commercially. This is a big deal because other marketplaces already have a license like that in place. And they allow content creators to sell things that the customer isn't allowed to make money with. So as an example, I could make a Spider-Man outfit that looks really cool as a fan art appreciation type thing. And because I've put a lot of work into it, you might want to use it for your fan art things but you wouldn't be able to buy that and then go and turn it into Spider-Man movie animation and charge for it. Or you couldn't turn it into Spider-Man series of NFT, so you can't do that. So yes, that's what that's about. So it's gonna be a third license and we don't know how, there we go, that's it. Key EULA changes introduces a new licensing level called editorial licensing. This allows for a new type of content to be restricted to non-commercial purposes. So it means that if, if I wanted to sell my Spider-Man outfit, I can now go ahead and do that through the DAS store. So that's the big deal. That's why this is important. It's, it's other marketplaces already do that, including people like TurboSquid uh, or Sh Shutterstock rather, uh, who are owned by TurboSquid as well as uh, RenderHub, these people, they do that. And currently, if I had an item to sell, I can't sell it through DAS, which is a shame because if I sell other items at DAS, um, you know, I, I can't do it through DAS. So now with the new license, you can. And it just means for customers, you can't use it to make money with it. That's the only difference. So you can't use it in commercial projects because the content creator doesn't actually have the right to give you that license as such, and neither has DAS. And that's why previously they had to restrict these items and couldn't sell them on the DAS store. So there we go. This is essentially to come in line with all the other places like uh, Render Hub. I don't know how Renderosity deal with that. Render Hub. And if we look at Spider-Man, for example, and we see something like this, OBJ and STL, things like that, Spider-Man No Way Home outfit for Genesis 8 Mail, like this, for example. And that probably has, I would imagine, the editorial license on the extended use license IP restricted. Ah, there we go. That is their, their way of wording it that way. Extended use license, this means that you may use the model in a variety of mediums, but because certain intellectual property depicted in this model may be affiliated with or endorsed by the original license holder which of course you don't have the rights to redistribute this model is subject to an editorial use only restriction which limits the ways in which you may use this model so these guys already have that and then um, what was it on uh, turbo squid it's essentially the same thing if i go if we stick with spider-man as a great example 3ds max blend 159 bucks not bad not bad at all we have editorial license this intellectual property depicted in this model including the brand marvel is not affiliated with or endorsed by the original rights holder and must be used under editorial use restrictions which in this case means <laughs> The company or individual owns depicted intellectual property is allowed all uses in the 3D model. That's the rights holder. So that means, in, this is actually kind of cool, if Marvel buy your model, they can use it because they have the IP. That's, that's kind of cool. Official licensee, you may have an explicit written license with the owner of the depicted IP and are allowed to use it. Documentaries, as an example, is a jazz documentary using a 3D model of a Fender guitar with an editorial use label which discusses the use of Fender guitars in their role in musical properties. Academics, if they want to dissect that this is what Spider-Man used to look like in school. Editorial license is not... So there's a quite a lot of things that you can use the editorial license for. So, you know, including portfolio renders. What you cannot do is advertising, merchandising, defamatory stuff branding no incorporation into logo trademark or anything commercial purpose no commercial non-news related purpose so you cannot make the new spider-man movie with this thing and then call it 
Spider-Man 11. Oh, no, you can't do that. Modification 3D model with an editorial license label may not be modified so that it no longer contains depicted intellectual property. So I don't really know how this relates to do you need to get permission from Marvel before you can put your Spider-Man fan art 3D outfit onto any of the stores. I don't know how that works, but that is basically what this editorial license is all about. So it's not about Das wanting to scam us, quite the opposite. They're going to give PAs a new opportunity to sell stuff they weren't allowed to sell before on the Das store. That is what this is about. No, I think, Chris, it does allow fan art. I think that is the, the point of the editorial licenses because there is a huge user group of, of DAS Studio that I didn't even know existed that use this not to make VNs or renders or commercial projects. They, they simply use this, like Nico is a good example. I, I don't know if he's here, but he would, be, he would be in that category. He does this because he produces fan art and, and that, is, that is essentially what he does. And for those people they sometimes want things like if I needed the Aloy outfit because I wanted to make whatever a thumbnail for an upcoming stream of this I could use that that's that's a possibility but I could not then make a limited edition print of it and sell it or I can't make an NFT with it and sell that so I can't do that I think that's what it's about so it is it's still that gray area that um, so technically I suppose the right the license holder could still go after this guy because they could say hey look you're using our intellectual property in a product and you're making cash so either you need to give us a percentage of that so i don't know if that is included in this or they could take him down so i know that from my own experience with doing something similar in regards to fan art when i used to make ios apps i used to have more like a programming exercise but it was like a tracker app that would allow you to to check off uh, which parts say of a James Bond movie you've seen so there's James Bond books and movies and there's like games and all kinds of stuff so I've collated all that information and you could have an overview of what exists in this universe and then you can tick off what you've played or read or watched and you get a list of what stuff you haven't watched so that you, you don't miss out basically and it was like you know 99 cent app and uh, I did this for several of these types of properties like you know uh, Poirot detective novels and uh, all, all kinds of other things and each and every time the license holder came after me to say you have to take this down you're not even allowed to use this in a logo in the name you can't you can't do that so back then and this is this is almost 10 years ago now back then this whole fan art thing i think companies weren't quite as open as they are today because otherwise if i type in spider-man on turbo squid i wouldn't be getting 150,000 results I would probably getting zero and because they know this exists so they could go and report these products but they choose not to do that because it's kind of nowadays we realize it's actually good for your brand to have these types of items out there and have people playing with the thing because then they're more more uh, likely to buy licensed products or you know buy into this whole universe but I don't know how this works if uh, if a percentage of this goes to Marvel I really don't know and it's true. I think, I think, Chris, this is partly why companies are now just no longer pursuing this as something. I mean, with YouTube, we have a similar issue that, uh, that people will be using Simpsons footage in their own documentaries to highlight things. And rather than go after every single copyright claim, they realize, hey, people are going to be doing it anyway. We might as well let them because it's kind of good for our brand if we, we become meme territory. I don't know. But yes, yeah, so that's what the editorial license is about. And we're going to see this in, in DAS products now as well. I don't know how this is going to work if you go onto a product, if we're going to see a similar box like this, or if we're going to see a special notice on this, or if we're going to see it inside DAS Studio on a, on a product we're using or something like that. So it's kind of, kind of interesting to, you know, to think about it. I think companies realize that this is kind of crucial to casually slip in with influencers who then mention you and and repost stuff and uh, and uh, I think also it's it's a bit like um, so I, I've, I feel reminded of how Epic approach uh, game developers that they quite clearly say hey look we're not interested if you're making hundred bucks a month with something that you've worked five years on we really we don't care go for it it's fine if you ever make a hundred like a million a month revenue and more then you got to give us a license fee but below that we don't really we don't really care go for it you know i think that's a that's a nice uh nice thinking
Oh, really, Neville? Yeah. And this is because it's, I think that's the old thinking. I think the old thinking is that this overprotective, making sure our IP stays only within us and whatever is licensed by us, but that's not how the world works anymore. I think there's a real realization in that, I think. Indeed, that's right. And I think this is most most indie developers won't even make a million. And I think it's kind of generous to say, uh, do you know what? Learn it, play with it, use it commercially, make big money with it. If you make really big money, then we get a cut. But we're rich enough that we don't have to waste time and resources going after little people who go and use an unlicensed product. That's I think that's that's basically what it boils down to. And I think that's kind of how the how the world's woken up. <laughs> I feel. Yes, editorial license. Good stuff. 